Hey everyone, this is a Persona 3 Reload tips video or little guide for newcomers for this game. It could be a bit confusing or too much to get into the first few hours to understand the flow of things, especially when every moment of the game does matter. Now, this is a bit complicated to create this type of video since a lot of mechanics are locked until you progress much more story in the game. So I will just go over the important fundamentals and certain strategies that you could apply in the first hours of P3 Reload. Also, the game casually gives tutorials from time to time. It's not hard to understand or miss, so don't feel like you would be lost if this video doesn't cover everything. To clarify, I will be covering what the tutorial normally wouldn't tell you or cover strategies that the game wouldn't talk about, so sit back, relax, and let's get into it. Although the Persona games and what you may know from them is that they are very stylish within their turn-based gameplay. They also focus the game outside of its combat, which is the daily life activities that anyone goes through, literally. You could even say that this game is sort of a life simulator. Our first tip is understanding time management. Time is a crucial part of this game since daily life activities help you not just throughout the day, but also for combat. Let's focus first on knowing how typically your daily schedule is. The main protagonist is a newly transferred student in a high school, so he would wake up, go to school, attend his classes, then once school is done, he is able to do whatever he wants throughout the day. That's when the daily activities get important because you only have two time slots to use when doing your activities. What I mean by time slots is that let's say I want to go out and eat food, which puts up a social skill like your charisma, courage, or academics, which I will explain later. Doing that activity will take up your whole afternoon time slot. Then it moves on to the night where you choose another activity that is available throughout the night. Daytime and nighttime activities can be different depending on what you are trying to do, which is why be cautious on approaching these interactions. You want to have purpose each time you do something. To recap, you only have two time slots to spend throughout your day, but please note that this won't happen at certain points in the game due to the story. Another thing I want to include for more time management is about Tartarus. Without giving its lore, it's basically a way the game introduces you to the gameplay loop for its combat when you start exploring these dungeons. It's only available throughout the night, and let's say there is is a scenario where you regret going in and there is an option to leave it whenever you want, but I don't recommend you leave Tartarus immediately and you should spend your time there regardless since you want to level up yourself along with your party members. As I said before, you want to create meaningful time since you can't get it back once the night is over. Within Tartarus, there are many floors to explore before you hit a border wall. A border wall is something that stops the player from exploring the dungeon, which means they have completed the certain blocks session, and the border wall will open up once the player progresses more through the story. The game will let you know once it has opened up and it is okay to explore once more, but back to why it's important to still be in Tartarus even if you didn't want to be there anymore, it's crucial that you grind out the game as much as you can since bosses can be tough. It's also you can obtain newer personas to fuse when exploring Tartarus which we will talk about later, and you can level up your own personas. At certain levels, they learn new moves or abilities, which can help a lot throughout your battles. Another thing to point out is that you may say, well, I already completed my block session since there is a border wall now. I have no absolute need to go once again. Although that may be true, you still want to make your time as useful as possible, so doing a rerun of Tartarus is appropriate to do so, since having more experience is better than none. You could always rerun these floors by using the portal while still obtaining valuables to sell or find useful items to keep when exploring these floors. I do want to note one more thing involving your time with Tartarus is that try to finish Tartarus within a night. Maybe within a few nights. If played right though, you could always finish the block in one night. I do want to express that you could always manage your time however you want with Tartarus by splitting the time into other days. I personally try to finish the block in one night since I have much more time being used for my daily life activities. This goes on to the next tip which is prioritize social stats and social links. They are as crucial as you level up you, your members, and Personas. There are three social stats to have, which are Charm, Courage, and Academics. They all play a role in your daily routine, since they are things that help you open up new scenarios in the game, which is interaction with new people or going to new places that require a certain level for a social stat. There are plenty of ways to level up these social stats efficiently, but I do want to note that there are scenarios during your lectures in class where the teachers ask questions, which, when answering the question right, your academics can earn XP or depending whatever the scenario is, that can apply for Courage and and charm as well. It's important to get those answers right, mainly so you don't waste a day on not obtaining it since those are free points to get without relying on your time slots. Also, if you're not confident with your answer, you could always use the network option. If you press your touchpad on your controller while you are choosing an answer for the question, it will open up the majority of the people's answers from online if they are connected to Persona 3 Reloads Network, which is 99% of the time, the answer that has the majority of the people picking it is right. 
right. I think what's unfortunate about this case is that if you are a console player, you would need to have a paid online subscription for a single player game like this in order to use this feature, although the, for PC it's free. I do also want to point out that the students in the game have exams in which all the questions that you have answered throughout the past two months are in there. So try to remember as much as you can when you answer these questions throughout your class time, especially when the network option is not available to look at for the answers while taking the exams, of course. The third tip is to explore during the day or night. I believe it's important to be curious about things, especially when a lot of interactions can help you get somewhere in terms of its gameplay. There can be potential benefits, but it's always nice to understand your surrounding. An example I could give is that there are certain places that could help benefit me during combat or when exploring Tartarus. When I find these vending machines, they have SP drinks that can replenish your SP while you are roaming around the dungeons. SP is such an important thing to conserve when running up Tartarus since personas consume your SP when they do certain moves. You want to always have enough SP during your runs, especially when you encounter tough enemies. You never want a situation where all your members are out of SP. Pretty much to sum it all up, it's your resource to always be fighting, and once it's out, you will be in a very tough spot. So it's important to always collect and conserve SP drinks from vending machines. Also know when they restock because they only give a few drinks at a time. It's very limited when you buy them, so always use these drinks for emergencies when in Tartarus. I'm currently in the middle of the game, so I have a lot of SP drinks or SP related items in my inventory, and it became very useful when I was doing a run in Tartarus for nearly three hours, like real life hours. <laughs> Which is what I mean on how exploring and discovering new things can help a lot in the long run. I do also want to mention that you should memorize the vending machine spots where the SP drinks are available, which I will show on screen, and they tend to restock after 4-5 to five days. I could be wrong on that, so I do advise to check up on the vending machines when you stop by them. The last thing I want to put out is that do this with everything rather than just always going for SP. You never know what items are nice to obtain. I personally have a lot of items in my inventory, especially I have items that are used for heals, for HP, or status effects. Just collecting items is important since you can be in random tough scenarios and your items are the ones that could potentially save you from the situation. It's quite easy to collect a lot of items in the game, so don't be shy about it, especially when stores tell you that on certain days they go on sale. Use your yen, use some of it, don't use all, and you know, buy some good deals. I also nearly forgot to mention this that sometimes even being a regular or visiting certain places during your day can help you gain more social stat points. So to recap everything, always be curious and explore when you have the chance. Experience these things so you know what you'll get into. For the fourth tip, always check your phone or map UI. If you have a tough time remembering a certain schedule or have no idea what you should do, your phone lets you know who is available to hang out with or sometimes stores text you what is special going on for that day. An example I could give is that a store will text you if there's a sale or if you could work part time for that day. There's another way to give yourself a recap on what you can do for the day which is using a restroom but they don't tell as much compared to what you see on the phone and map which by the way the map also gives visual cues on what you can do when you open up the town map. They show who is potentially available to hang out with or what side quests you would have to do at that particular location. I still would advise people to use the restroom since they can tell something that you may not even be aware of, especially if the phone or map don't give those ideas to you. Also, it doesn't take up a time slot, so just having more knowledge on the things you can do is better than not knowing at all. That's just free knowledge on what you can do for the day or do it for some other time. 
Hey everyone, I know this is a bit weird, and this was originally supposed to be a like a tips video kind of summarizing how to approach the game, but I feel like the game has so much mechanics and even small mechanics that may go over your head that it's important to know these certain things. So I'm gonna like do this live and talk about how you should approach Tarsfris and how I typically do my runs. Um, and I've been really enjoying the game and I put plenty of hours into Tartarus at this point. Um, I, I, should, I personally think this is one of the best features that they did in a Persona game because of the how they have roguelike mechanics implemented into them. Uh, but yeah, let's just get right into it. I will also be talking about the Velvet Room with its fusions and like how you read certain things with the UI. Um, so stay tuned for that but right now we're gonna just talk about how tartarus is right here this is the portal let's say you enter tartarus again you could always do a rerun of the block and for those who don't know what a block is if you guys didn't understand what i was saying previously the whole tartarus tower has different blocks i just completed my first ever uh block and it's called thebel and it has like many many floors it has about 21 floors and we're gonna go to the 21 floors so I could show you how the border wall would look like. I think it's important to show you guys. Because once you hit the border wall, you completed your block in Tartarus. The border wall will open once again, as you see here. It'll open once again as you progress much more throughout the days and also the story. But let's say, like I mentioned before, you didn't necessarily want to go to Tartarus and you just made the mistake of entering or for whatever reason you just changed your mind on not like doing a session in Tartarus once more and you already like completed your um your run here i say rerun the floors start even from the beginning especially like when you're in the beginning of the game you you don't want to uh you don't want to waste the night at all. You want to make your time valuable and meaningful as, as possible. And this is basically free XP, especially if your characters are already over leveled. Might as well just get the extra personas to fuse and the extra XP so you could level up. So we're going to start at level 5 and I'm going to show you how I typically run run these floors. Now how Tartarus does, does their towers is that each floor is actually auto auto generated so there's always random floors every time you proceed now certain floors like here this is not an auto generated floor this is just an actual like permanent floor that uh you just stop by at since there's a portal and i guess this is a chest that has a static drop to it meaning that there's a permanent uh item that every player gets it's not random for each playthrough or you could say yeah it's a scripted item that you get after completing a certain amount of floors but anyway, so onto the sixth floor. As you see here, we have no map. Previously, you saw how we had like a whole map already. Now we don't have the map anymore because this is a whole auto-generated floor. It's a completely different floor, and it's gonna be like that for a majority of the floors when you're uh, going through the game. As you see here, we're, we're already encountering countering the an enemy. So I just want to say, typically, how I do my runs is that. I always clear out the entire floor because these floors can have good items and chests that contain better items as well. Sometimes they're, they're not the best items, but it's just better to collect amount of these, uh, like good amount of items so that you could use them in the future or just conserve them overall, you know? You never know when you're going to need them. I also wipe out, like, I try to wipe out as, like, all the enemies as possible. They do, they do respawn at, at, at a certain time. I just don't know the, the, like when they actually respawn but they're always gonna they're always gonna spawn again so i always at least get the enemies once by the way just to let you guys know you could run around tartarus by pressing the right trigger or rt uh rt or uh r2 i don't know how i think it's shift on mouse and keyboard um and this is really important because if an enemy spots you oh yeah by the way and also you could swing your weapon two times as well so if you miss if, if you whiff your your strike against the enemy, you could go for another strike. But anyway, the uh, reason why they're running is so important because if they spot you, they could just chase you immediately. Oh, he didn't want to go up the stairs. But they run pretty fast. Um, and later down the line, mo these uh, shadows get much more aggressive and maybe they are a bit faster. I don't know. Sometimes they could just catch you off guard because when you're roaming around these floors, sometimes you're kind of mindlessly running around like me. Uh, and... They could just get you from a corner and hit a first strike on you. One of the things that you want to do uh, in these fights for every enemy and try to like just 
like make this a make this a habit for yourself is always try to do the first strike on them which is hitting them from behind okay he didn't look he didn't look in front of us you always want to hit them from behind so you could get that seize advantage so you could fully get um, the uh, you could get the first turn and so that they won't also interrupt your turn your I think every member if you get a seize advantage I think every party member is able to go first then the shadows go uh, because if you don't hit them from behind and you just hit them from the front, uh, they would it won't count as an a, a seize advantage. You won't get you will technically get the first turn maybe. It's like a 50-50. It's 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 like a dice roll dice roll I think. Um, so you'll kind of go uh, on and off with the uh, you'll be taking turns with the shadow. Like for example, uh, I, w I actually I'm just gonna show you later. But anyway, the strat that you typically want to do when encountering any sort of shadow you always want yeah so you want to focus on hitting its its weakness but sometimes uh let's say if you counter if you encounter these for the first time you're not gonna uh find its weakness immediately that's why you have to hit as much variety of moves on these enemies as much as you can sometimes you could hit the weakness as soon as possible by just your judgment and your observation because Certain enemies have certain movesets, like for example, an enemy would have a lot of ice attacks. So, my assumption uh, to that shadow is like, oh, it's probably an ice type, so I'm just gonna, I'm probably gonna hit it with fire. So it could, you know, it's, that's probably its weakness. And at some moments, that's true, but there are times where that's just not the case. But it's just better to have like the, uh, like, it's just better to have those certain observations or assumptions than not trying at all, right? Um, in, the, in this case, I kind of already know like what their weaknesses uh, are, but we're just gonna hit them uh, with a like just a neutral attack. And since the bow, since the bow, uh, Yukari's bow has like a special ailment on it, which is the um, it has poison. It, it does have a chance of it, of it being poisoned. So since we also already fought these before, they do tell me like what their weaknesses is. If you press the analyze button, which is LB, it gives you a whole gives you intel of like of the shadow on what was effective or what was neutral or what they're or what they are resistant to. As you see here with this shadow, it's resistant to fire, but it's very weak with ice because I hit him with the the variety of moves from back then because I hit him with fire before and it was resistant but I hit him with ice and it was weak to it so here uh, it is weak to the uh, three physical uh, it's or it's weak to one of the physical attacks which is the slash attack attack type I think I think that's what you call it, the slash type um, because there are three physical attacks uh, in this game which is the slash type the strike attack type and the Pierce uh, attack type. The rest are element types. So since Junpei has a sword that uh, that is based off the slash attack type, we're just gonna go by just pressing the normal attack. And when we hit a weakness, we get a free turn. We get a, another. We get a once more or a one more turn to to follow up with another another attack. And Later down the line, the game will slowly teach you how certain mechanics are, so don't worry if this explanation seems a bit confusing or overwhelming. My apologies, but yeah, the, the game itself also teaches you, so hopefully like you're understanding uh, once you get into these fights. But yeah, they'll teach you the shift mechanic, which you're able to pass up your turn to, another, to, to your other uh, party members, and this is very useful, especially if your party member is not capable of hitting hitting a weakness on any of the enemies, especially how um, Junpei has a fire persona and then this is resistant to fire and then this is neutral to fire, but it's about to die anyway. But it's just better to, again, always hit the weakness because uh, you just get infinite amount of, of turns if you're, you're utilizing, the, well, not necessarily infinite amount of turns, but you get much more turns uh, when uh, when you always hit the weakness with other party members. So here, since uh, our main character is able to wield different personas, if you press triangle or Y and press LB or RB, 
you're able to go through the, the different the different personas that you have collected or, or fused. So here this is weak to wind, so that's all about for like Yukari later on. Um, but here it is weak to ice, so we're gonna find if we have a ice attack. So our our Stingray Shadow right here uh, has an ice attack, so we're gonna use it on him. And it's also really good to hit the weaknesses, because in the end of the fight, you initiate this new mechanic, or I don't know if it's a new mechanic or not, uh, called the card shuffle, which the roguelike mechanics come into play where they give you either buffs of like uh, for your rewards or your um, uh, for your personas and such. I I'll show you once it happens. So we're gonna shift shift it to Yukari once more, and we're gonna hit the weakness. It's unfortunate I couldn't show you guys the all-out attack, but if you get also all the um, if you also get all the shadows knocked down if they're toppled uh you initiate a uh you have an option to do an all-out attack which all the party members kind of just group up and and attack attack them all at once and they take big damage from it which you always want to aim for and all-out attack is probably one of the best moves in the persona games that you want to do because just the damage as as a party to to the shadows okay so unfortunately like for some reason, we didn't get the card shuffle, so I don't I don't know what was going on there. Um, even though we hit like a lot of the weaknesses, on oh, here's an item right here. See, and we got a life stone. That's really good because the life stone they give 30% of maximum HP. That's really really good, especially for these runs. So you always want to be collecting these these items. Like I have about look look how much I have. I already 15 from from this, and also you get. You also collect SP items like this Soul Drop and Snuff Soul. It's it's the resource for uh, to fight these enemies constantly. Especially like SP is important when uh, when these when these shadows have constantly are, are weak to elemental elemental attacks. And usually elemental attacks use up SP. You always want to uh, do your best to conserve SP uh, during your runs. Um, sometimes you have no choice, um, but you usually want to use uh, SP, especially if you're hitting your weaknesses. Here, we're kind of spared, or well, we're kind of spared since um, damn, we inflicted with poison. We're kind of spared since we don't have to use much SP on here because one of them is weak to a physical attack. Now, in this case, see, because I, I wanted the card shuffle to come through because um, every time you hit weaknesses and do all-out attacks, I, I think the card shuffle comes comes into play. And this is where, again, the roguelike comes in. The roguelike mechanics where you're able to do e EXP up. There's other ones later down the line. Like, you're able to actually upgrade your card shuffle in, in the future. And there's a lot of things that get much better for rewards or, like, obtaining certain personas. But yeah, during the card shuffle, you're able to have the, uh, you're able to have a persona, or you're able to have things such as like, um, you're able to restore health from the battle, or you're able to ha have something like this EXP up. You're able to have much more yen. You're able to obtain a skill card, which is like um, getting a getting a move set that you could teach your personas for. Um, and there's actually just much more. There's other special cards out there. And on the bottom left corner it says Ar Arcana Burst, which is something that you always want to aim for and max out. Because every time you get a major Ar Arcana card, which is like those special cards that will appear time to time during the card shuffles, I think it shows up randomly. Uh, always try to aim for the, um, the major... Uh, arcana cards because once you get the arcana burst you have another card shuffle right after you hit the arcana burst and then i think you have a big selection on a much better or a higher tier cards to select from or you potentially may have like just special cards overall to to pick on and by the way since this is a beginner's video and you're probably seeing this in your beginning of your runs in tartarus i don't recommend getting exp up i think that's just 
sort of a waste because they don't there's not much of a big difference for this level one card uh, it gets better down the line when you maybe hit level six level five that's when you see a big difference with exp up in the beginning of the game there's really not much difference uh, especially when these shadows are also easy to get through so you know you might as well just grind out and you might as well just clear the floor and always fight these shadows and it's just best to get a persona because it's it's always good to be fusing and getting different personas each time so we're just going to do that also we're going to use this persona as well to show an example when they for the velvet room so this just to show others like this is this is the other card shuffles it's a like i said it's a bit underwhelming in beginning of the game but it gets much better when these things get upgraded so we're just gonna get money up. It's always good to have yen because you're not gonna have a lot of yen in the beginning of the game as well. I guess I should. Oh wait. Oh, there's a uh, there's a chest here. So yeah, the chests are always auto generated and you get random items from it as well. So we got like a. See, we're getting like extra HP items from them. You see how much like you could actually just collect from these uh, these runs. I'm gonna show you how it's like when you, when you don't get your first strike. I think that's important to, to show because you never want to be be hit like that at all. Let's see, let's see. I'm gonna try to run away, and he gets us accidentally, right? So, yeah, the screen turns red when a shadow has an advantage. See, oh, this is perfect. So this is something you never want to encounter, where they're able to just fully like do. Well, let's say if we're on their level, right? I'm pretty sure they're gonna do a big damage on us, or at least like quarter, quarter damage, which is like you, you just never want to take damage at all. Especially these runs could be, uh, could be long, um, especially if you want to finish it in in one night. Because once you die, once you die, you start over. You have to start over all the way from the beginning, and you kind of lose all the progress and items you have. So you always have to be careful as well on how you approach. Um, these fights sometimes there may be times where you just have to just run away and just keep going to the next floor to see if there's a portal uh, but which I'll I'll show as well uh, but here uh, as you see like they're able to not only take damage on our party members but they hit us with a status ailment or a status effect which is which is distress which is not the worst ones uh, out of out of all of it there are definitely worse ones like poison charm and potentially fear so in in these scenarios you want to uh kind of take away your your ailments as as fast as possible because it's really gonna really affect you in the in the future of these battles it's just gonna cause a whole domino effect which you don't want um because the enemies like if you're caught slacking they, they they could actually get you really easily just like how you could get them really easily if you exploit their weaknesses but here, since we have, luckily, we have an item for distress because I don't think I don't have any other items. Um, we'll give that to Junpei. And uh, we'll hit him with fire now. And you see how much of this comeback is just... The, the fights in this game, what's really interesting is that you could be really losing a fight and if you play your cards right, no pun intended, you could change it up like this immediately. You could have a whole comeback. Now sometimes, um, as you see on the upper right corner, when you enter a floor, your navigator will tell you some certain, will, will give you a certain like quest line of um or sub quest like oh there's a valuable treasure chest or there's something to check out i recommend you you do that because like i said i always clear the floors and i also get as much i scavenge for all the items as as fast as i can so that's what i'm gonna do and here it also shows the gold chest is probably the valuable chest over here so that's what we're gonna go for i'm gonna be ignoring the enemies because I think you guys understand. Oh yeah, typically in these rooms, if there's an if there's a if there's an enemy here, you want to um, basically take them out as as you're looting. You might as well. So we got cure water. Sometimes it's not gonna be the best. It's not gonna be the best, but it's still worth to collect. But um yeah, as you see here, they they also mark the chest on the map. Uh, even if even if you didn't exactly go to that area like the um, the 
the FOV of uh, every time you enter a new area, like, you see how I barely covered this corner, but I was able to, like, just get this whole area already? You don't, even though there's enemies, like, walking around here, you could still cover the map pretty easily. So, I think that's a good strat for those who, ooh, <laughs> he's trying to get me. He's still chasing me, like, yeah, they, um, yeah, some are just aggressive. He, he followed me up the stairs, as, as you saw. I'm gonna go get this chest real quick. I think they despawn. No, he didn't despawn. Sometimes they despawn when you get the chest. But, um, yeah, on the map, it shows the enemies actually really chasing you. Uh, so, I, I think that's also a good way to... Oh, as you see... Oh, you saw that? He despawned. But yeah, looking at the map is also a useful way while running away from enemies, so you could try to juke them. But I'm gonna show you that, like, if you go through these floors, eventually you'll hit a portal. Um, which is also very important to to look for. And I know I'm not getting all the items here because I'm just kind of going through this quickly. But uh, for those who are new, I do highly recommend you scavenge the whole entire floor and get every nook and cranny as, as possible. Um, because it's it's really important to collect items at the beginning of the game. Because I still use a lot of items. Um, I'm 40 hours in and I still use so many items that are... Uh, that I collected from, from, like, my first ever run in Tartarus, so. Oh, see, we have a locked chest, which requires a Twilight Fragment, which you get Twilight Fragments sometimes uh, from these auto-generate floors by just hitting them. They're, they're those blue sparkly things that you'll see, like, when you're doing your daily activities in the uh, real world, you could say. And sometimes, uh, sometimes here in Tartarus, um, and in order to get Twilight Fragments, you have to do your social links, which is your interactions with other people. Every time you, I think, upgrade a social link, or... I don't know if it's every time you upgrade your social link, uh, where it raises up a rank, or... I don't know if it's also either you, uh, just interact with them in, in general, where, where you just spend time with them, you get a Twilight Fragment. But every time you, uh, get a Twilight Fragment, uh, you have to go to Elizabeth about it, and she'll give you it every time uh, you interact with someone, but let's get this one right here. We have 15 Twilight Fragments already in this save file, wow. Balm of Life. I think that's the one where that gives you a whole ton of SP or that's for like a revival item, which is really important. So, let's just say, um, let's say if there's a case where uh, you're out of SP, which you never want to be in those type of scenarios, because again, you never want to like overdo your your SP. Oh, hold up! You never want to do your SP. How how can I show it? Okay, so you so you know how each attack uses HP if you do physical damage, or um, if you do a physical attack, you, you lose 11 HP, and then if you if you do like a elemental attack. Uh, it does take up SP. Later down the line, uh, when you get better moves, better the move is, you do use much more SP. So you always want to have, like, maybe sometimes, you know, when when having a persona, you always want to have, like, a, a weak elemental attack uh, so that you could just at least hit the weakness um, for, for the enemy while not spending a lot of SP when doing your runs. But again, that's not always going to be the case, and which is why I say that collecting SP items is really important um, and conserving them uh, and using them for emergencies. Again, playing your cards right is just so important um, because the more you succeed, the more you're just going to get better, better loot in general. Oh, here's a portal. So, yeah, but... Let's just say you're just in a tough spot and you can't complete the the run in one night. You could, like I said, you could always complete them in, in different nights. You could just play them in chunks, right? Um, I only recommend playing them in one, in one whole night so you could focus on doing your social links and other activities uh, throughout the whole month. Because you're pretty much free right after that. And also if your party members are also uh, are leveled properly. Because... Right now we're all level 11, but we're nearly one-shotting these enemies. On some floors, you don't always want to rely on this strat because it's always random. But on some floors, 
uh, they're gonna have portals available for you to access and return to the entrance. This gives you an opportunity to kind of recuperate and later down the line without giving spoilers you will have other party members so let's say if other party members are low on HP and you don't want to use um, HP items on them and let's say they're also low on SP and you don't want to use the SP items you could always switch them out you could always switch them out here in the stats uh, menu if you press square or uh, X for Xbox or PlayStation um, you could take them out the party and you could just solo Oh well, you don't want to. I don't know why I said that. You don't want to do that at all. But if you have other party members, you could literally um, switch them out for others. You could do this as well. I think this is a, a longer way to like switch out your party members. Just better off like doing this in the menu. That's how I do it. That's typically uh, what you would want to to do to also reserve your items and SP, right, is switching your party members. You can't switch out your main character because this is the main person you're controlling. Everything involving him, like let's say if he goes down in the party, um, in, in, a, in a fight, then you lose. So you always want to keep him alive, the, your main guy alive all the time. Your party members, even if they die, you don't lose the fight yet until you go out. Just to let you know. I think I pretty much covered like the fundamentals on how you should approach Tartarus. Again, I know that's, it looks so simple, but down the line, things will change up. Things may be a bit more difficult. You will face maybe special enemies, like special mini bosses in, in these floors, and they will pop out just like any regular fi uh, any regular shadow. Um, and you could approach them and sneak up on them and get a seize advantage on them, like get a first turn. Um, but just know that when you approach these shadows, and you'll know that they're a special shadow because they're glowing red, they will take up a lot of like they take up a lot of uh, HP. They they use a lot of HP. They have a lot of defense, so you may be using a lot of SP um, when going into those fights. But anyway, yeah, I think I pretty much showed you how you should do your Tartarus runs. Now you will encounter these as well in the random floors. Uh, when you use these, uh, when you use the clock, it pretty much fully restores you, but. In order to in order to use the clock, you would have to literally use half of you have to use seven of your Twilight fragments, and Twilight fragments are very, very like limited. So you never want to use it on the clocks. Honestly, I've been I have never used it once yet, uh, and I'm and like I said, I'm like 40 plus hours in the game. I'm about to hit my 50th hour, I think soon. So I haven't even used these uh, yet haven't resorted to it so if I haven't yet you don't need to either um, so I guess I'm gonna run it down how it's like with the velvet room so let me load up that save also how how Elizabeth uh, works as well because she's also very important Elizabeth is she's able to give you a lot of like passive sub quests and even side quests that give good rewards and and other great material material that you could use in the future that you could craft with and also she gives you certain key items to fuse these special personas so again these are pretty easy like in the beginning it's it's pretty easy um, but down the line there will be stuff where you have deadlines so you always want to prioritize those deadline quests um, as you see here we're only in the month of May but she wanted certain um, certain things uh, from the real world you could say uh, that like she wanted a handheld game console and uh, a pine re uh, resin um, and I did those immediately and we're already still beginning of, of May as long as your time management is is good you don't have to worry about deadlines just always just always know that just remember that if you have deadlines just prioritize it and um, just get it over with and then you can do whatever you want because a lot of the things without the deadlines they're pretty passive they're like passive quests that you'll eventually like you know get these down the line uh, you'll complete it and also um, always check if she has new quests because uh, and I think it will tell you because there will be like a mark above her head it will show like a um, it will show like a exclamation mark that you completed a quest or she has more quests to to give and it'll say here under sort status you know how this is all says uh, in progress sometimes it says available you always want to uh, I guess equip it 
um, or accept it so that you could and there's no like punishment if you accept all quests or whatever right and I think it's just best to do that because that's how you're able to just mindlessly progress those quests because I, like if you don't accept them I don't think they're gonna progress your quests at all I think I'm not sure so please correct me if I'm wrong on that just do it just in case it, it does not hurt you at all anyway so that's pretty much like what Elizabeth does with her role and uh, there's again there's so much other mechanics down the line for the game but I can only say so much right now so that's what that's sort of the gist of it when it comes to her but let's go down to the velvet room and talk about fusion social links and all that and why social links is very important in the game but first with the menu you have fusion which is your typical like for fusing your you fuse your own personas and then there's special fusion where you're able to have these cool other different personas that have good stats on them and move sets um, so here you start out with this level 15 now you can't fuse personas that are above your level as you see right here right by my webcam um, our main character is only level 12 so we're not able to fuse this unfortunately but down the line you will and uh, as you see here, there's a, this is another way to see, like if you go to Fusion Search, this is another way to see your other outcomes from your personas that you could potentially uh, make. And then if you press, if you press LB, uh, LB and RV, it shows which personas are being fused. So this is number one. Um, this is the number one persona. You can't see it right now because my webcam is kind of covering it. Uh, but this is the first persona that's going to be fused if we want chimera and then number two is uh fornius and then the result would be here as you see here where it says in capital letters the s link bonus that means there's a social link bonus which means that previously we've put our time and socialized with others that involve the chariot arcana as you see right on the um name of chimera in, in the background of its name it says the chariot we associated uh, apparently with a chariot arcana which is one of our our social links which i don't remember who exactly uh but this highly affects your fusion so higher the ranking of your social links will uh will affect your fusions by giving much more bonus exp when they are fused and now when they reach the max social link which is up to 10 i think you get not only obviously you get a lot of like xp but i think you do get like a special item from it i'm not entirely sure on that not that not that it's like super important to to note um as of like right now for a, a beginner's guide but you know just to just to let you all know uh and it's also uh every time you fuse you inherit skills from the two from the previous um personas that you are fusing from both of them now sometimes you're not going to get the skills from both of the personas so you have to pick certain ones that they they give you that the persona is able to learn so as you see here, there's S T M A E N A G and L U. Uh, L U is luck, and I think with luck, it, it does with um, it affects your critical, your critical hits, and also maybe when you give status ailments to the persona. I could be wrong, so please correct me on that. Agility is for evasion, um, so higher the evasion. Uh, and when your persona is equipped, you're able to dodge a lot of the, um, you're able to dodge a lot of the shadows attacks, which is really good to have. I I mainly like using agility. Um, endurance is for defense. That's E N E N for endurance. That's for defense. M A is magic, which and magic is pretty much the things that you use for S P, such as the elemental. Uh, moves and strength is obviously the physical attack such as the slash attack type the um, The strike attack type and the pierce attack type and as you see here as well This persona is actually very resistant to physical attacks, which is the strike attack and fire, but is weak to dark so Wherever it has the uh, exclamation mark. That's where its weakness is at so always keep in mind Especially like if you're familiar with the certain block you're roaming around at Always keep in mind on what personas you want to equip. But I think it's also important, especially um, in beginning, if you're starting out in the beginning of the game, is that you should focus your personas on the social links that you're really doing. 
So, for example, let's say, uh, let's say um, I am really focusing on the chariot uh, so social link, then I'm just gonna keep making um, the a lot of fusions involving the chariot personas. Um, but for me in this playthrough, I think I was just doing a lot of these social links all, all around. So, I mean, as you see here, I have a I have the Justice Arcana, uh, the Tempest uh, Arcana as well. We'll make Chimera because because uh, why not? He, Chimera looks cool. Since Chimera's stat stat boost is really high on defense and potentially strength, we're gonna focus we're gonna focus the move sets to be on 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 strength and uh, and defense. So we're gonna give him. <laughs> These are actually interesting. Increase uh, one ally's attack for three turns. So this is a buff attack, um, or it gives it gives a buff for attack. Uh, but again, you don't have to go super in depth in the beginning because you're you're gonna be fusing much more. So we're gonna go for bash, and since you know we don't have any other move sets, we're just gonna use these. I feel like those are important having those buffs around because one was for buffing for evasion and one for attack. So it's going to be useful, I guess, you know, just for example for, for this persona. I can't really give a better example to be honest with you. But always look at its stats so you could build a good persona that's able to benefit off your your moveset. And also in, in battle. And since it leveled up, oh wow, it leveled up to level 11. Because I think it was level 8 previously when we fused it. So it leveled up 3 levels. Now... The reason why these social links are also like just so important, right? Is that let's say your social link is really high and you fuse and you fuse it, sometimes the personas could be very over leveled. Like they could be a higher level than than you. Like uh in my current save that I have right now, I'm like level 40 something, but I was able to fuse um a persona that was like around also level 40 something similar to where I was currently at. And it was able to over level to 50. So, and that's a big, big difference, right? You always want to have have much more numbers up. You know, get all that power. And since you're constantly always going to be fusing, I I also suggest don't be afraid of, of fusing unless unless you really need that persona, right? Um, when you go to registration, oh, okay, all your personas has been registered. So I always register the personas because you're able to register the persona at their current level and the current move sets that that they have, and you're able to summon them here. For example, if I fuse my main persona Orpheus, right, I'm still able to get him back, but I do have to pay some yen for. I do have to pay some yen for him. Let's see I, if I could get like a get something that I I haven't had yet. Oh, I can't buy him because uh, I only have 50 yen. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> this this save file is I, I'm so broke here, um, but um, yeah, you're able to get back to personas and how you use them before, uh, right before you fuse them. Let's say, and sometimes you could even mess up while while fusing. You could accidentally use a persona that you didn't mean to mean to fuse at all. So you could come back here and and resummon them, and you could have them back like as if nothing has happened to them. You just gotta make room in the in the party, but yeah. Always register your personas, uh, especially if you like their move set and their current level and such. Um, and again, if you mess up or if you ready to use them and you want them back again, you could always resummon them. The cost is, is yen, actual yen, which is why yen is another important thing in the game. All right, guys, I had to re-record this, and uh, I think this is actually important for your Tartarus runs as well. Uh, but before we kind of talk about Tartarus, I do want to talk about the things that you could get to benefit you in combat, which is the weapon store. Now, again, I thought about this, but I think it's just, you know, I might as well just add it to the guide. The game already teaches you, like, where the weapons and the armor place is. So this is where you get your equipment at, your, your accessories, your weapons. Um, so as you see here, you buy a weapon, you buy armor, footwear. Yeah, footwear isn't necessarily for armor. It's more so for evasion, as you see here on the stat list. And now each one is, is different with evasion. Some give some give like certain effects, like this one gives strength plus two with a 66 evasion, while this evasion just gives more evasion but no effect to it. 
Now, typically, whatever build you're going for, yeah, sometimes it is good to pick um, the lesser evasion with the better ability, which is strength or even more agility or whatever it could be, right? Um, so, again, it's up to your build. And then if we go to accessory what are you looking for? this is just another way as well to if, just just to give you much more uh, benefit to your builds and abilities like for example if you're trying to be resistant to the freeze element then have the ice resistant it'll nullify it well this is actually really good it'll nullify it. you don't no need to really stack any about. other uh, equipment to make it as effective this accessory alone will make it work now you will unlock different equipments like every time you progress through the story so you don't need to worry about like oh how would i unlock this or that but i think the most important thing is the armor and weapon now you typically are able to find normal equipment or even better equipment within tartarus but it is a you do have a small percentage on finding them uh so if you do want guaranteed loot and you want them immediately I suggest you go here but the thing is you would have to be spending a lot of yen like a lot of my yen is sort of sp spent here um, but you do have the sell items well I have nothing to sell but if you find items from Tartarus you're able to sell every valuable you have from here and don't be afraid to sell them all because they'll give you an option to sell all because they don't sell your important key items or whatever so feel free to just s sell for weapons and and such they do give abilities as well uh, and again, it's up to you on what build you want or if you feel like you're lacking damage then yeah, you know Go go for it or if you're trying to go for a certain build that benefits certain abilities go for it um, but I think also the The armor is very important Especially how you're gonna be doing long runs in Tartarus um, again, it's a lot of yen. So it's like It's about playing the cards right as well. And at the same time, it's like uh, what is convenient for you in, in whatever scenario Everything you're in. I can't really guarantee your guys' success because I don't know how you would play the game. But I think it's important to know like, hey, there's a lot of things in this game that help you succeed in some sort of way, in some sort of fashion, right? Now on to what you should do before your Tartarus runs. This is actually one of the most important ones. So every time during the night, you need to have level 2 courage, your social stats, in order to get into to get into the club. Um, because if you're under level 2, then you won't be in it. So in order to be level 2, um, or like gain much more social stat, it's obviously doing activities that will help you increase like uh, your social stat, which is going to the coffee uh, place, coffee shop, you could say. Um, and you can work part-time here. Now, what's really cool about this and why I recommend you work part-time here in the beginning of the game is because not only it raises up your courage, you get yen from it, and also it puts up another social stat, which is charm. See, you can work part-times here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nights, um, and the wage starts at 2,500, and then it could potentially do an increase on certain nights and it helps you improve your charm and courage. So each night you do work on here, you get pretty much good bonuses. You get a charm stat up, a courage stat up, and a and then you get much more yen. So there is that. Try to focus on this area in the beginning of the game. And then once you be uh, get to level 2 courage, you go in the club. And then if you go to the right here, there is a fortune teller. Now ignore this because like I'm in the middle of the game and I just unlock something. So if you go to I want to know my fortune. Now we're going to ignore the last three here. We're going to ignore this because you guys don't really need to know this because it's not offered in the beginning of the game. The first two will be offered in the beginning of the game which is rarity fortune which increases chances of encountering rare enemies in Tartarus which is something you should always go for whether you're a casual or even a veteran you should just go for it go for the ra rarity fortune uh, because rare enemies are pretty much they're not even the tough enemies uh, to deal with rare enemies don't even hit you rare enemies typically are punching bags to uh, get or sh the shadows are the punching bags to like get much more loot like material 
materials, a lot of yen and XP. So always go for that because having that increased chance will help you just ease the grind uh, a bit more. Now with the gamble fortune, this is where I was talking about earlier when you're going to encounter the red glowing enemies which is like the mini bosses in Tartarus. So this increases the chances of enemies turning into strong or rare enemies. So yeah, there's a chance that you're going to have a, a, a strong enemy but there's still also another chance of you having a rare enemy which is regardless, I think both of them are still valuable because even strong enemies give like good loot at least I think they do they do have a chance to give good material but like they give good XP and yen I think um, but for casuals I always recommend just go for the rarity fortune I really don't see no no big reason to really go for this other than like you, you really need to force yourself to fight an actual boss enemy because you also have the pot potential risk on uh, wasting some SP on a lot of these uh, a lot of a lot of these strong enemies, you know, while you're fighting against these strong enemies. But also, Elizabeth does give side quests where where you fight certain bosses in the game uh, or mini bosses, you could say, the tough, the strong enemies. Uh, so this does give it an increase of, of chance to spawn spawn them in because um, sometimes it could be hard to find these certain enemies. So these could be useful for uh, Elizabeth's like side quest if she asks you to take out a certain enemy and add a certain block. This is also one of the most important things uh, for your combat, which is the, the shrine area. So in this shrine area, I'm just going to talk about it here. Um, this sort of relates with your obviously your fusions, uh, but your social links, more so your social links. And this is pretty self-explanatory, because I don't think they really introduced the shrine area in the beginning of the game, unless you really needed to go here. Because when I was first playing it, they didn't really tell me, oh, the shrine area is open, you can visit it. You just kind of have to assume and, and travel here that it's like, oh, you know, just get curious about this place. Um, which is, uh, so anyway, when it comes to the fortune area, uh, let's say, um, someone that you have a social link with and you pretty much said, like, wrong answers to them and you disappointed them or made them sad somehow, uh, with your answers, because that could happen when interacting with them and the bond has been damaged, it could be repaired by drawing fortunes. And also, uh, you do get a bonus sometimes, depending on your luck, that... Uh, you'll have an effect on your wallet, which means you gain some yen. You don't gain a lot of yen, to be honest. The highest I ever went was like probably 500 or maybe a thousand. I think it was 500. So when you draw a fortune, it shows like the people that you um, have social links with and and, and all that. Uh, and again, this is important, especially if you're grinding out your social links. And if you made a mistake, come over here. And um, this does take up a time slot, but it, it is worth to come here and repair your bond and just leave it be and grind out the social link much more, right? So you always want to kind of be up to date to that. But I don't typically go here since I don't really mess up on the social links and you don't either. So this place shouldn't be as relevant to you in your playthrough. Just I hope you're answering or I hope you're responding right to your social links, your peers. And also, by the way, a tip when you're responding to your social links is that uh, they normally want to, you want to answer what they want to hear. Even if you're giving your most authentic opinion uh, to them, this isn't like The Witcher or whatever. The conversations in the game are kind of quite linear sometimes, so give them the answer that they want to hear. If you want to, if, if you're unsure on what to, what to answer, give them the answer that they want to hear so you could have that safer choice. Anyway, this is the uh, Inari Shrine, which is very useful because when you come here and when you have your skill cards, right, uh, and skill cards is basically movesets that you could teach your personas, so I have like elemental or magic skill cards that I could teach them, um, and also that goes with passive abilities as well, and, and support abilities and, and heal abilities, right? So this is the su support abilities like Pierce Boost, do Dodge Dark, Dodge Light, Dodge Pierce, Ice Boost, Electric Boost, Shift Boost, Multi-Target Boost. You, you get what I'm saying. So uh, when you come here, you're able to, whatever's in your inventory, you're able to do a copy of 
one of your existing skill cards and it could be replicated immediately and you may do this once per day. This doesn't take up a time slot at all. It does not. So, I'm just gonna show you one. You always wanna like, especially if you're doing like, if you're trying to do a build with your persona, this is the perfect opportunity to do so. So let's go to passive skills because I like using a lot of passive skills for my, my personas. Especially for like the dodges, the dodge abilities, or um, the multi-target boost, the shift boost, since I'm always using the shift uh, ability, or the crit rate boost. Uh, let's just do crit rate for example. You duplicate it, and there you go. You're able to teach your persona a crit rate boost. Um, and Or you have to go to your items first and then... Here, I'll just show it right now. So you just go, well, let's just go to whoever. So our guy here uh, is a, uh, he's a like a strength main. So if we give him crit rate boost, there you go. He just has it. He already has it and you know, it's just on there. That's just one of the random personas I have to be honest with you. Uh, I don't, I, I had no idea actually. Had it. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's, it's really quite simple especially if you're always going for builds and you could you could always replace moves these moves are not permanent so you could always replace them with others just to let you guys know as well so i hope this helps uh, i hope i pretty much showed the fundamentals again if you have any questions let me know and i'll try to answer my best and and for those who are familiar with persona uh and i haven't discussed a certain tip to newcomers feel free to comment down below just don't spoil that's really it so that wraps up for this beginner's video on how you should approach persona 3 reload there is still so much to learn but in order to avoid spoilers i had to not discuss certain gameplay mechanics since they involve story if you are a player that is experienced on p3 reload and want to share more tips that i have not discussed in this video feel free to say it in the comment section just make sure not to spoil anything i hope this video helps a lot for those who are new and if you have any questions about the game feel free to comment down below as well remember to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't yet any support to the video and channel is much appreciated i hope everyone has has a good one and enjoys their Persona 3 Reload experience.